And Tim, you can send along Greg. So we are having a run of UVA. Okay, we're going to adjust the lighting. We're having a run of UVA astronomy graduates. Uh, Phil played, uh, got his PhD from the University of Astronomy, uh, University, of Astron <laughs> University of Virginia Astronomy Department. And uh, I did as well sometime later. And who we have coming in next is an astronomer. Um, it, uh, who was also got his PhD at the University of Virginia. So let me poke Tim again and make sure he sends, send along. And, and you put the USB drive in the computer? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, got his exactly. materials. Okay. So Greg has a really cool project to share. Uh, and I think it's radio astronomy related. I think, oh, you yeah, told me that. Okay. Sure. Okay. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, Greg has the esteemed, uh, honor of getting the screen name Radio Astronomer, grrr, long before I, I did. Um, so he's coming on in now. Hi, Greg. Hey, howdy. Well, you guys are running on standard conference time, 10 minutes late. <laughs> but we were on time until Phil came on. <laughs> so, like I said, we can go for 32 hours and 10 minutes. It's, it's not a big deal. <laughs> we'll just push everyone back. Uh, so why don't you um, give us a, a uh, tell everybody who you are, where you're working, um, and a little bit about the project you're going to tell us about. So uh, my name is uh, Gregory Sivakov. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Alberta in Edmonton. That's in Canada. So I'm uh, from a little bit north of you guys. Fraser with Lavio. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I'm an assistant professor here at the Department of Physics, where I mainly do astronomy. Um, among my interests, besides actual science out of astronomy, there's a lot of uh, interest in public outreach. And I'm involved in a project called uh, SkyScan, which is what I'm going to be talking to you guys about today. Cool, cool. Yeah, she's uh, setting up um, a screen share right now for your, for your what did you send along, slides or pictures? Yeah. Yeah. So. I can talk about what SkyScan is while yes. uh, Pamela sets it up. Sure, sounds good. So basically, SkyScan is what we call a science awareness project. And it's a joint project between the University of Alberta's physics department and the Edmonton Center for the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, what we call RASC here. And so RASC is an amateur astronomy organization, very similar to what uh, you'll have throughout the states. Um, and they are got different centers that are sort of semi-autonomous. And we're working together mainly to provide a spark to promote a lifelong interest in science and promote scientific career choices. And our main goal, our, what we're mainly trying to do is focus on using the electromagnetic spectrum as a way of exploring the universe around us with a strong component that focuses on grade school children, uh, especially grades 6 to 9. And we, have, uh, we don't just you know, do the standard science stuff. We actually are promoting real participation in real science projects. And right now we're starting in Edmonton, Alberta, but we're trying to move out slowly to some of the underserved rural and or urban communities in uh, near town, as well as the uh, First Nation schools, what uh, some of your audience might recognize as Native North Americans in the larger Edmonton area. Oh, we have some pictures here. Want to tell us what we're looking at here? Um, once I see what we're looking at, I can tell you what we're looking at. If you at. click on the little but little box that down there, it'll show big for you. I'm showing it for the audience. Ah. Yeah. All right, well, so I was going to sort of talk about this a little bit later on, but we can talk here. One of the main projects that I'm really uh, enthused about with SkyScan is uh, something that goes beyond the standard stuff you do in a lot of outreach programs. And rather than just working in the optical wavelengths, we're also doing some projects in radio wavelengths with our grade 9 students. And what we have is we have a whole project that's set up to allow students to detect meteors using radio waves. And so one of the reasons why we want to do this is because normally we're used to seeing shooting stars at night. But during the day, you can't see those, radio, uh, you can't see those shooting stars. So how do you follow meteors during the day, especially given the fact that most school children don't want to stay up late at night to watch all the meteor showers? Radio waves gives us a way of doing that. And what we're showing you here is actually uh, an indication of the type of radio antenna that you can build yourself for just under a few hundred dollars. Basically, you can make an entire antenna that is designed to detect a specific wavelength of 
FM radio transmissions, and I can explain how that can tell you when, when you actually get a meteor. What are you looking for? What's that? Which image do you want? Sorry. No, that image is fine. OK. We can stay on that image for a while. Let us know if you want to change. So We'll do. So if you imagine that when you're scanning your FM radio, most of the time the stations are just static. But if you go and travel long distance, sometimes those stations that are static will turn into actual radio stations. We're doing something very similar with Skyscan. So we find one of these static stations, just pure noise, and then we find a station that's about 800 miles away that transmits on that frequency. Most of the time when we're pointing, uh, we can't actually see that uh, antenna directly because of the curvature of the Earth. So most of the time when we're pointing uh, towards that direction, all we get is static. But every occasionally, what will happen is a meteor will go through our atmosphere. And the meteor will ionize bits of the atmosphere, and the atmosphere will act like a mirror. And so now we'll be able to see radio waves bouncing off that mirror and hitting us. And so for a second to sometimes 30 seconds, you'll be able to pick up another radio station 800 miles away. And this is the way you detect meteors, one of the ways you detect meteors in the radio. So if you go to the second image. I'll zoom in on that one second. No problem. So the basic idea is that you build a, a simple antenna that looks a lot like your TV antennas um, of yesteryears. And you attach that to a car radio. That's the little thing down below the antenna. And that car radio is, allows you to digitally tune in onto the station that you've set your antenna up for. And then if you can connect that to the sound card of your uh, computer and use a special, science, uh, special program, you can record the, uh, the amount of static that you get. And then every now and then you'll get these blips when you actually start picking up the station. So you really can't see that in that image. But there's a whole bunch of blips in this particular uh, little graph down here, and all those are the different meteors during a meteor shower. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to actually get this real science project into the classrooms in grade nine here. I think we can be done with those pictures. Okay. Do you want to move down to the next one? Uh, well. Or no? Okay, tell us what you need. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll go here. Okay. So one of the reasons why uh, Skyscan got started up is we actually had an opportunity when they destroyed the uh, they knocked down the physics building to build put up a new building. So before 2007, on the old physics building, we just had a, a single 12-inch telescope in a basic uh, shed. And when we were plans were being drawn up for the new building, we said we really wanted to make the observatory a focal point of the new building. And we were able to get three different uh, domes onto our new uh, interdisciplinary science building at the University of Alberta. And with those three domes, we've not only increased our capacity for outreach, but we're also using this as a way to generate these partnership projects, like the partnership project we have with the Royal Astronomical Society. And so with, between the partnership and the increased number of domes, we can go from serving 1,000 people a year to serving 4,000 people a year plus have these projects where we go out to the schools. Yeah, so you and I came from UVA where Dark Skies Bright Kids was a project that went out to um, rural schools uh, as well, and so we, we got to do a lot of, of outreach there. Yeah, it's amazing because when I, when I came to Alberta, Skyscan, they'd already formed the idea of Skyscan, and every single project of Skyscan was something we'd actually already implemented a little bit at Virginia from telescope loaning programs to uh, visiting rural schools to uh, the observatory uh, outreach uh, stuff. So it was a really nice to be able to make that transition from Dark Skies Bright Kids to Skyscan. Cool, very cool. So, and of course, I love the radio aspect of, this, of, of the project up above the Skyscan um, because, again, it's exploring the universe in a way that uh, you can't see with your eyes and, and that you don't think of when you think of, oh, I'm looking up at the night sky. Um, and that, and uh, plus you're, you're introducing kids to these concepts in electronics, which is also a really important job skill. 
Absolutely. It's, but I think one of the great parts is that we're not using pre-made antennas. We're not using these things. We're actually basically showing how people how to construct these uh, antennas. And so you get a project that not just gives you the science, it gives you a little bit of the engineering. It introduces you, as you said, to the whole electromagnetic spectrum, radio and optical, and gives you a nice talking point for a bunch of different areas. Do you want to see the next image? What are you looking for? No, I'm just looking. I'm just looking, trying to figure out. You guys are very little in the screen right now, so it's hard to see what's going on on your end. Okay, yeah, you can oh, click was, on those. I was moving t-shirts, sorry. Gotcha. <laughs> I, we had this wall of t-shirts hiding behind our fake newscaster's desk. Ah. And I was... Which still has pizza on it, which people have been commenting on. <laughs> <laughs> it's tempting pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Screw it, I mean, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry, go on, continue. Oh, no worries, no worries. This is a closer-up well, picture of, of this antenna. Homemade antennas. Yeah. Basically, wood, copper wiring... Uh, coax cable, and with the right design, you can design a very simple FM antenna, just like your sort of, this is almost exactly like the TV antennas that people used to have on their roofs. What do you we call have, a um, do you, oh, it is a Yagi, okay, cool. Do you have instructions posted on how to do that at home? There are instructions, so uh, if you go to our website, which is skyscan.ca, S-K-Y-S-E-A-N.ca, there are some instructions. They're not, it's not the easiest site to, to navigate quite yet. Um, but there are some instructions that tells you how to build it uh, for the frequencies that are good for Edmonton, the 92.5 uh, FM frequency. But it also shows you how to calculate it for other things. So this is just showing a three-element Yagi antenna. I believe we also uh, have instructions on how to build a six-element Yagi Ooh. antenna as well. If yeah, Yagi is Y-A-G-I, if you're looking for that on Google, everybody. Yep. And so, if you guys give me a second, while uh, you guys ask me a question, I can probably find the exact link. Ooh, excellent, excellent. Uh, um, actually, I just wanted to, uh, we've been talking about making um, radio telescopes out of leftover satellite dishes that I've been picking up on Craigslist. That one is called the Itty Bitty Telescope. Uh, a radio telescope. Uh, so if you can Google that, uh, that's what I've been talking about a little bit um, earlier. So uh, that's just for the listeners out there that were asking about that a while ago. So yeah. Um, uh, so how has the project been going? Have you piloted this in a few schools yet? So yeah. So the, uh, right now we've got uh, working antennas in two schools and we've got a uh, people involved in uh, eight more schools, it turns out that we've, we, we've ran into two problems that we weren't expecting. We should have used a little bit of common sense, but it turns out it's actually difficult to get permission to go on the roofs of schools. Yes. Yes. That's a big deal. <laughs> so so that, that's one of the problems we ran into. And then we did run into a small vandalism problem in another school. Oh, but we're no. still working through all the issues. Uh, but in order to make sure that even if the, uh, we can't get an antenna on an individual school, we do have antennas at the University of Alberta, and one of the directors has his own uh, uh, Yagi antenna as well that we're using so that students, if they don't get to build the antenna, they at least get to do the science with the data. Excellent, excellent. That's really cool. Um, so I'm about to invite in our next guests, and I just realized two of them never made it onto the schedule. So... Um, I, Scott Maxwell, if you're out there watching, I will send you an invite and I will also send, um, yeah. Kim, Kim an invite as well. I think Emily locked walls on the schedule as well. Yes, she Kim is. hasn't been able to track her down. So Emily, if you're watching, uh, you've been sent a green room link. So, uh, come join us. <laughs> so can we just directly invite Scott to come in? Sure. Okay. And Kim is that. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll deal with that in a minute. Um, okay. So do you have any, like I said, any last plug or any um, last well, message about these projects? My message is not just about this project, but it's about sort of the citizen science projects in general. I think we're really sort of in a watershed moment or watershed time uh, in how we're doing a science. And it used to be years ago that you never get people involved in science until they were in college or beyond. But I think nowadays, 
where we can do, are trying to get people really involved in science through projects like CosmoQuest, like SkyScan, at young ages. And it's really critical that we support these projects, both on a government level and on a, an individual donor level. So I just want to go with what everyone else is saying for CosmoQuest and really just plug how important these things are. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's the great thing is getting more people involved in science. Um, and like we said before, you get more science for your buck that way <laughs> when we're recruiting people from all over to help us do the data analysis and do uh, all this amazing work. So thank you so much, Greg. This is no an problem. awesome project. This is, I've been, I know, we've got more comments going on about how I've been talking about building a radio telescope in my backyard forever. Um, I need the money for the signal meter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not pushing for single meter dishes yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, but thank you so much. Uh, you thank guys you. are doing amazing work up in Alberta. Um, and uh, thank you for joining us. No problem. And good luck with the rest of your uh, hangout upon. Thank, thank you so you. much, Greg. Bye, guys. Bye. Um, okay, so I'm sending out invites. We have. Uh...